see my slides? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Are the slides visible? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The visible start. So welcome to the talk on Fedora Haskell packaging and building. Uh, my name is Jens Peterson. Work for Red Hat. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to the US this time uh, doing this presentation remotely. Um, and I'll just jump ahead to the slides since time is uh, a bit tight. Um, so first of all, why, why do people use Haskell? Um, well, there's a, several reasons. Um, it's, oh, I'm not going to go into much detail about Haskell's talk, but just a brief motivation. Uh, functional purity and immutability. Um, and all Haskell functions are, are kind of like mathematical functions, so they're very protected all. Um, and then another important aspect of Haskell is a type system, and people try to um, push types as much as they can, try and help make using um, sort of advanced data structures to uh, install the state and the um, uh, structure of their, their code. And, and, and then they try to make the compiler do more work for them so that they can have more confidence in their code. Um, GSC also has good, well, GSC is the main Haskell compiler, it's got good uh, concurrency support. Um, the reasonable performance in the generate uh, machine code um, works on um, automatic textures. Um, so, uh, I'm sure I probably can't hear you very well, so I'm going to try to make it a little bit more interactive, but you know, so, do you know any famous Haskell projects? Um, this, maybe you've heard some of these, um, Pandoc, a markup generator, or converter, a uh, shell check, um, the X minor, the window manager, GDNX, um, other others listed here. Um, also, I think Will Woods yesterday was talking about the Welder project, and they've also been using Haskell actually for their obvious development. Um, and Haskell's also really great for writing programming languages, and a few other sort of functional languages. Uh, these days, pure script is getting quite a bit of attention. Um, so image yeah, JavaScript. Um, also, Elm, also written Haskell. Um, and some dependently typed languages like Agda and Idris. Um, and I, I often get asked, like, who, who actually uses Haskell? <laughs> so, I just put this slide up. Just, well, there's, there's various, it's getting, I think, Getting more usage. Um, for example, Facebook is using it for the spam, uh, writing spam on their uh, site, especially common spam and so on. Um, various financial institutions are using it for trading and other uh, financial applications. So it's getting used in blockchains and various um, like consultancy companies that have been following on. Um, all right, let me move on to the uh, call echo system a bit. Um, firstly, some of you may have heard of Hackage, which is kind of the main Haskell uh, uh, package repository. Um, so basically, you know, almost everyone these days publishes their uh, Haskell packages, um, and updates, and so on on, on Hackage. Um, and Hackage. Packages on Haskell web. Haskell packages usually have a system or kind of packaging system called Cabal, which um, is really easy to use. Uh, there's a tool called Cabal Install, which users can use to install uh, Haskell packages pretty easily. Um, um, and it just briefly, I'm not going to go into detail, but so Cabal packages are quite um, detailed metadata, so later on we'll, we'll talk about generating RPM packages and so on, but basically well pack, sorry, well files which contain the metadata have basically have 
all the information needed to generate a, uh, an RPM package, for example, or, you know, all the requires and descriptions and so on. So, um, and what was the interesting part is that, however, the package allows the revisions of uh, these metadata files. So sometimes, like, version bounds on dependencies need to be tweaked and so on, and that can be done. Kind of out of uh, the call, um, out of sync on the server. So, anyway, it just makes everything a little more tricky. Um, I'll be mentioning it again later. And, okay, there's an example package here. This happens to be one of my packages, but um, to give you an idea if you haven't seen hacks before, but it's, so there's all the, all the versions here, uh, dependencies. Um, the authors and copyright and licensing and, um, and there's a reason we found at the bottom here, so anyway. Um, okay. And, well, there are lots of packages on the package. It's, it's big. Um, I mean, I think I just counted this morning. There's about 13,000 uh, packages. I mean, you need, I don't need versions, but actually you need a uh, source separate packages. And so on. Obviously, a lot of these are no longer maintained. So Going for quite a while now, but anyway, this, this, there are a lot of packages we don't actively maintain. So. Um, the next I want to mention package. Um, so package is a kind of a downstream from package, and it's a sort of a small subset of well, if you say actively, well, they don't actually have to be actively maintain, but generally actively maintain packages which are consistent and so they can all be built in one. Uh, as they, they can all build together, and obviously they don't all depend on each other, but they're more complex and so on, and they all build and uh, well, more work well. So, um, and yeah, there's a website there. And there was also some different streams. There's a nightly stream, and there's plenty more stable, longer term streams. Um, the latest version is um, 12. But all we are currently on 11. Um, and there's a tool also which is called Stack, um, which is a sort of stackage, um, so it's kind of a comparable to Compile install, um, but it's a bit, kind of different feel to it. Um, okay, um, so, um, the, I'll come to the door has called. Um, this thing was started in 2007, and uh, after I started, it was a separate project. Before it, um, it was two years before that, but um, currently we have about 480 uh, source packages in Fedora, so it's, it's been growing quite well the last year thanks to a couple of great people. Um, and, well, the, the biggest challenge is, I mean, first of all, we, obviously, we don't have a lot of people helping, so um, I've tried to develop some tools to make life easier and less, and less pain and so on. So I don't know the most work. Um, the biggest problem sometimes is that the GSC compiler has very strict um, dependencies, um, sorry, um, yeah, I mean, version dependencies rather. But any, any minor change of version dependency requires recompiling, um, yeah, so any, if any package depends on another package and that dependency gets bumped, then we need to rebuild the, uh, all of those dependencies. So, yeah, anyway, I've been pushing for just good sort of basic to refreshes of the packages once per development cycle, which is like roughly every six months, but we do have some extra updates out of out of band, but um, this is an example of a change where we did a major update for our Fedora 28, which is an uh, JC point. Fedora 29. Um, oh, I didn't find it anymore. Um, There's a few more people, unfortunately, which are the slide. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of people have been contributing to this. I just wanted to mention that, uh, these people. Um, I have a link to the full slide, I think. Um, okay, well, I think... Uh, I don't know. 
nice thing to talk, so. Um, yeah, so let's talk a bit about the tools that were being used. So the first tool is the World Kabbalah RPM. This is a tool which generates uh, like spec files for RPM out of these Kabbalah files. Um, and it has a few nice things it can do. It can also update packages. So if you have an existing package, say, in Fedora or something, and you want to update it, it'll do its best to do that. Basically, just creating a diff between the spec files that would be generated between the two versions, and then applying that diff to the uh, uh, spec file. And that generally works pretty well, um, but it's not perfect. I, mean, I, I, I actually want to kind of write like an RPM editor at some point. I mean, it's kind of a tool to edit uh, spec files, but there's also a refresh, which means sometimes I update the packaging uh, for Kibana RPM, so it's possible to refresh packages. Uh, that using Lexis. I was also using Kabbalah RPM for a while, but now that they're using a different tool to package. Um, um, I think I'll miss skip these demos because I don't think I'm not going to remember very quickly. I can just show you. Um, I'm not sure how easy that it is to see the screen. But, um, but yeah, so. I'm going to make it bigger for you. Um, I hope you can see that. So yeah, there's, there's a few commands Compile RPM supports, like uh, spec, which generates a spec file. You can do it on source RPM. You can do local builds. Um, you can also uh, you know, install dependencies or list missing dependencies in your system. And you can do a diff to compare the current spec file with what a fresh a new, a new pristine spec file would look like, and also these updated fresh commands. Basically. Um, I'll probably want to show more right now. Uh, we'll see if there's any time left over. Um, then, so, that, so Kabbalah RPM is basically a tool for working at the individual package level, but then I have some tools, or few tools to work with uh, my, the whole, well, in terms of the whole set of packages. Um, so it helps with rebuilding, um, well, there's, there's a, first there's a page for FH package, uh, which kind of can just sort of clones and do things like committing. And so it's mostly, mostly working on the git, package git, um, things. And then there's a build command, uh, which can do local builds, or it can also do builds in the Fedora build system and so on. And one third thing is they can actually do kind of chain builds, which is not normally supported by the Fedora's uh, package build tool in the sense that you can build for updates for current releases and using uh, otherwise and so on. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the current build system. Um, and then there's also a Parzilla tool which helps to refresh um, bugs, uh, like so called update bugs in uh, like version update. But actually, this is sometimes redundant now because we're basically just stacking stackage and so. Maybe we could even stop these bugs, but I don't know. We've really not had them for some time. Um, Alright, very quickly, I'll just show you what the kind of. Um, each package has a lot of um, commands. Um, can do basically can also generate metadata, upload distro metadata which is uploaded to stackage, um, and I uh, can yeah can do various things like list of these packages. Um, check like if there are unpush uh, commits and well, all kinds of well various things that I found useful. Um, and the build tool, well, there's less commands, so I think I mentioned, but it has a few extra things that can be uh, pending builds and so on. So. Alright, and uh, we don't want to show the bug in a command now. Uh, okay. And there's one more tool I wanted to mention. This is actually a general tool, it's not specific to Dora Haskell, but it made recently, which can order, it orders, um, 
I think it's by build dependency order. So I found this kind of useful. Um, you know, yeah, it's not so easy to, but it is, it's pretty handy. But it's just a small thing, but yeah. You can also calculate reverse dependencies and dependencies. Well, that's both the check out. Thank you.
the article for this article, but uh, I think that's about it. So um, thank you to our speaker, uh, Jens, and uh, of course, we gave you the email, so uh, you guys can all contact and questions later on. So perfect. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.